hand stiffness, why you cannot ignore an injury. You got your hand twisted up in someone's gi, or you felt a pop when your punch landed awkwardly, and now there's swelling. You can't make a fist or grab things. You are not alone. It is something I see in clinic every day as a hand surgeon, and hand stiffness is a problem. And if you do not treat it early, it can become a permanent problem. Our hands are how we interact with the world. We play music, we perform surgery, we throw punches and work with hammers. Our hands are amazing, precise machines that are frequently injured. Whatever the injury, the stiffness that can develop is a common, frustrating problem that can reduce motion, limit strength, and slow recovery. I have plenty of experience with hand injuries and the resulting stiffness. I know how big of a deal it can be, both as a hand surgeon and as someone who is in the game using my hands. In this video, we will cover the anatomy behind stiffness, why it happens in the context of injuries, and why preventing post-traumatic stiffness is way easier than treating it. This will all lead to a second video about the treatments. With injuries, it comes down to move too much or too soon, you inflame things and slow healing. Wait too long, you scar in and get stiff. This is why you need experienced professionals helping you along the way to guide you through the steps based on where you are in the process. First, let's define stiffness. It is more than just loss of motion. Stiffness is the soft tissues, the ones that are supposed to move, getting more rigid. These soft tissues are primarily made of a crucial protein building block called collagen. A collagen fiber is fairly stiff on its own, but these fibers are arranged in our tissues to be able to move. With injury and the subsequent healing process, you can see my video on wound healing for more details, new collagen is formed. And in this process, crosslinks between the collagen fibers form. These crosslinks prevent movement of the fibers relative to each other, and this can limit motion of the soft tissues. As an analogy, you can think of it like nylon stockings. The material, nylon, itself doesn't stretch, but the weave allows movement. Increase the connections in the weave and everything locks up. There are other causes of motion loss. First, some definitions. Active motion is what your brain can actively make your body do. Passive range of motion is the ability for the body to move with something external helping it. To hammer home these definitions and decipher between loss of motion and stiffness, here's some examples. If a nerve or tendon gets cut, you'll lose active motion, that brain-body connection, but passive motion remains. If a joint is dislocated or a bone is not aligned correctly, you will also lose passive motion. These injuries need to be assessed for and treated immediately as they can result in stiffness if not treated correctly. So the anatomy. To move, you need proper alignment of your bones with healthy joints between them. You also need those collagen-filled soft tissues, the muscles, tendons, ligaments, and skin to stretch and move. This is the case for all the places our skeleton moves, but especially in our hands, which have 27 bones each. You can imagine all the soft tissues required for healthy hand motion. Important finger joints include your MCPs, these are the metacarpal phalangeal joints, your knuckles, the PIPs, proximal interphalangeal joints, and the DIP joints, distal interphalangeal joints. These joints are moved by tendons, which are attached to muscles. Ligaments support and stabilize the joints. The finger joints, especially the PIPs and MCPs, are critical for hand function. And because their range of motion is so precise, even small amounts of stiffness can cause big problems. Special mention, PIP joint sprains can cause pain and stiffness and swelling for three to six months. It can be frustrating. So, finger function. Different fingers do different jobs. The thumb is essential for nearly everything. The pinky and ring finger are crucial for grip. The index and middle finger are your precision tools for writing or pinching. Depending on the patient's job, the priorities for finger recovery may vary. A pianist will have to get their fingers really wide 
while someone who works in construction will need to have a powerful grip. Fun facts, there are no muscles in your fingers. All the motion comes from muscles in your hand and forearm. The flexors, benders, are stronger than the extensors or straighteners, which is why the resting posture of the hand is partially closed. The fingers are biomechanically linked. Motion in one finger affects the others. Try flexing your ring finger while keeping the others straight. It's a little uncomfortable. Making a fist while keeping the pinky finger out straight. It's hard. This matters during rehab. You have to move all the fingers. Causes of post-traumatic stiffness. Focusing in on the post-traumatic, this means after injury or surgery, causes of stiffness. The main issues are, one, the way we heal, which may not be totally controllable, and this includes inflammation, swelling, scar formation, and two, not moving enough, which is often controllable, and this includes immobilization or splinting, pain, and the avoidance of that pain. Inflammation is natural. It starts the healing process, but without motion, collagen crosslinks form and lock things down. Swelling, the fluid that builds up between tissues, also can physically block motion and can slow the tissue remodeling. Scar tissue, disorganized collagen, relatively speaking, and is less flexible than normal tissue. While immobilization may be necessary early on, it can be a double-edged sword if we wait too long and too many crosslinks are made. Pain causes the brain to avoid movement, which can result in maladaptive brain patterning. The brain may remap movement to protect the hand. Over time, this leads to compensation patterns that need to be retrained. In trying to balance all of these factors during the inflammatory stage, we often use a safe position splint. And this is wrist extended, MCPs flexed, and PIP joints extended. This position is keeping the muscles, tendons, and joints in an optimal length while resting. Of course, exceptions to this position are made for the actual underlying injury and other factors going on. In a side, why does it swell more at night? Well, a few reasons. One, less movement. There's less fluid drainage from the hand. Two, hands are often below heart level while sleeping or resting. This means they're in a dependent position and more blood flow means more swelling. Three, you may have to put in a day of activity that increases inflammation in the area. And lastly, four, cortisol. A natural anti-inflammatory in our bodies is at its lowest levels overnight. Also, you will often perceive, you'll notice, the swelling more once distractions are gone and you're trying to sleep frustratingly. So how to prevent stiffness? Get evaluated early by a hand specialist. Work with an occupational or hand therapist if that is what is recommended. The initial care should focus on reducing inflammation. This is elevating your hand above your heart, using gentle compression, and early motion when safe and cleared. A great simple set of exercises is the six pack hand exercises. These should be done six, eight times a day. The first exercise, the tabletop exercise. This is bending at the knuckles, keeping the other joints straight. Two, the hook grip. This is bending the PIP and DIP joints, but keeping those knuckles straight. Next, you've got the full fist and Number four, straightening out fully. These two exercises combined really get things moving. Five, the thumb to finger O's. This is where the thumb is going to the tip of each finger and opening up completely after each motion. And then the last exercise, number six, the table spread. With your hand flat on something, you open your fingers up really wide and then together again. These exercises work all of the muscles in your hand and get each joints and the tendons gliding. Other considerations in reducing inflammation. This includes taking anti-inflammatory medications. You should always talk to your doctor before taking medications. Good nutrition is crucial. This optimizes healing and transitions you toward the later stages of healing faster. So it is safe to move sooner. Then controlling other factors like diabetes, which the high blood sugar increases inflammation and can result in more stiffness, 
or reducing smoking, stopping smoking. Smoking reduces circulation and delays healing. There's your intro to preventing stiffness. Like, subscribe, get those notifications, and please stick around. You're going to want both your hands working at full speed. In part two, soon to come, we'll dive into how to treat hand stiffness. And this will include splinting, advanced therapies, and even surgery. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, board certified orthopedic surgeon and hand specialist. Thank you for your time. Thank you.